Good morning. If you would like us to have your contact information so that you can be on our list for emails about the church, um, please fill out a card in the pew and leave it in the offering plate or you can hand it to me after church. We love to welcome new folks. I am a bridge pastor, so I don't always know when somebody's a visitor. Um, so please introduce yourself after worship so that I know that you are a visitor and give us your information. Or introduce yourself after worship even if you're not a visitor. I'm still learning a lot of names. I understand that we have an announcement this morning from Lisa Hill. Good morning. Good morning. Yesterday was our holiday Christmas fair. It was wonderful to see people in the hall. It was really nice. And on top of that, we have so far raised $2,914. Woo hoo! Yes. Thank you. Um, this is all on behalf of Jen Shepley. She took the day off today. So to, uh, downstairs now is still the silent auction that will be drawn at 11.15. And we still have the raffle baskets some, and some other goodies and Ellie's knitting. So let's bump it up. Ellie, have any sale? Yes, and it is on sale. <laughs> Thank you. Phil, is there anything you want to say about the auction? Uh, 11.15, bid early, can bid. Bid, bid, bid. bid early, bid big, bid often, and the, elect and the auction closes at 11.15 sharp, is that correct? All right, so no sneaking in a bid at 11.16. <laughs> You're also invited, after all the excitement about the, going down and checking out the things that are left from the fair, that are on sale, the auction closing, get yourself a cup of coffee, and you're welcome to join us for our Advent Bible study. We'll gather in the conference room at 11.30. And we're looking at the biblical Bible story. You're welcome to join us after you've had some excitement downstairs um, at coffee hour. I'd also like to announce that music is one of the greatest gifts of this sacred Advent and Christmas season. Next Sunday in worship, we are blessed to have a Christmas cantata with guest musicians joining our own choir. And it will be a special worship service indeed, and I hope you will all come and be here since we weren't able to gather in person for music last year, it's a great gift to do that this year. So do come for that Christmas cantata. Speaking of which, I remind you that with, our, with the recent news, the rise in cases, the new variant, we're asking folks to wear masks in worship and also especially the singing. This church is singing hymns together. We can do that because people are wearing masks. A lot of churches are not choosing to sing hymns together. And um, if we aren't willing to wear masks, we really can't sing and worship together. So be aware of that, please. And communion today. I understand that we are going to pass the plate for communion, and the deacons will be serving you pieces of bread from the communion tray. Um, we will, and, and also the individual cups of juice. I think that's it for announcements. Have I missed anything? Oh, Tara has an announcement. Oh my gosh, it's here, I forgot it, I'm so sorry. The White Gifts Pageant, an incredible tradition in the life of this church, is on Saturday night. There's details in your bulletin. Do come. It may be that you can participate in the pageant this year. It is an audience, audience participation event, I understand. Um, and if you choose not to participate, don't, don't be afraid to come. You don't, won't be forced to participate. But it is a wonderful celebration and an evening of generosity and tradition in this church. Saturday night, 4 o'clock in Rainier Hall. Yes, David. We have the first four books for the Just Peace Library uh, will be available after church. The first four books for the Just Peace Library are available after church for some reading. It's not light reading, but it's very important oh, reading. reading on race. Yeah, they're all, it's all um, important reading on race. Thank you. Any other announcements that I may have missed? All right. I'd like to invite you to take a moment in Christian love to greet one another before the prelude. Go for an elbow bump. Just the folks around you.
With all that in mind, let us join together in singing. It came upon a midnight clear in our pilgrim hymnal, number 129.
We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is peace, for Christ is called the Prince of Peace. Christ's name is also Emmanuel, God with us. The presence of Christ with us gives us peace day by day. Please join us um, with the unison reading. Yeah. Eternal God, we thank you that through all the years you have given us peace to your people. Help us to have your peace in our lives. We pray that in this Advent season we may be able to do it. to the lonely, so that all of your children may have peace. Amen. Five of them who filled the house. 
But death touched his life again when one of the children was lost in infancy. The Longfellow home in Cambridge, Mass, was a home of grace and hospitality. Love and laughter and university students flocked there. Tragedy struck again in 1861. After 18 years of marriage, Longfellow's second wife was killed in their home when her dress caught fire. Longfellow, too, suffered serious burns because he had desperately tried to save his wife. It is said that his grief was nearly inconsolable. He did continue to write, which was then his full-time occupation, and it was a source of deep solace for him. In 1863, Longfellow suffered another blow. The poet was a staunch abolitionist, but he, like the entire country, was deeply troubled by the Civil War. His son, Charlie, in the March of 1863, decided that regardless of his father's wishes, he would join the fight. Charlie ran off to enlist in the 1st Massachusetts Artillery. Charlie was seriously wounded in November by a bullet that passed through his shoulder, barely missing his spine. Longfellow rushed to Washington, D.C. to retrieve his son from the hospital and bring him home to recover. On Christmas morning in 1864, with the Civil War raging and his son bearing the wounds of that war, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow set out to write a poem about Christmas joy and peace. He was determined to find joy for his children on that day. I heard the bells on Christmas Day was the result of his efforts. You will hear in the poem familiar verses celebrating the hope for peace on earth. Then the poetic tone shifts, and there are verses that are not familiar. For indeed, in the middle verses of the poem, Longfellow's despair and grief are expressed. The family deaths, his nation at war, a son badly wounded, his loneliness all come crashing in on him. And these middle verses show a remarkably different tone. Two of the three middle verses are omitted in most versions of the Christmas Carol because the war images were not deemed appropriate. Ah, but there's emotional movement in writing as there is in song. So the poem closes with hope and trust in the promise of God. Here's the whole poem. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And mild and sweet, the words repeat of peace and on earth, goodwill to men. And thought, how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each blank, a cursed mouth the cannon thundered in the south, and with the sound the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. So now let's sing it together and let it soar. Let, as Longfellow's faith did, let the truth that God is with us in the struggle give us courage and strength. You will find, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, is an insert in your bulletin.
changed it for you a little bit. Let us pray. Lord, bless the words of my lips, the meditations of all our hearts, that they may be glorious in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This past week, a 15-year-old in Oxford, Michigan, shot and killed four classmates, wounded seven others, and left a community broken by violence. Next week, December 14th, is the ninth anniversary of the Sandy Hook shooting. I wonder, how do we sing a Christmas piece this Sunday in the midst of wrenching sorrow of such loss and violence? Not only the shooting, but the violence which drenches our culture, this culture in which it happened. It seems that all the warning signs were there, the signs of despair and violence and mental illness combined with access to a high-powered weapon. And when I listened to the constant news thread of anger and attempted explanations, the finger-pointing and the blame game, my mind and heart grow so weary that I'm almost numb. And the theme of worship this week the second week of Advent is peace. Isn't that just poetic? As I reflected and researched and prayed about peace this week, I realized how very hard it is to define peace. What is peace really? There's an elusive internal peace that quiets the voices of doubt and despair of fear and longing in the midst of daily life. And there is that almost impossible, it seems, peace in the public sphere. The shalom of peace with justice. So it is I find myself longing deeply for that word of comfort, for that larger shalom that we imagine and lean toward this Advent season. The promise of peace and healing and reconciliation and no more war and no more violence and no more threats and no more fear and no more heartache. Can we even imagine such a time? How do you and I work toward and live into such a time? Isaiah's message from God, which we heard in the scripture reading, brings a description of a world where justice rules, where the whole creation lives in peace and harmony. In all of scripture, you cannot find a more idyllic image than this one of the peaceable kingdom. Who of us can even imagine a world where the wild beasts and little children play together and where the earth is full of the knowledge of the Lord? I think it's easier to picture a place where the children and animals play together than a play earth full of the knowledge of the Lord. And perhaps that's our problem. We tend to dismiss such a picture as an idealistic utopia, an impossible dream shared by a few sentimental environmentalists and peaceniks. And I'd include perhaps our just peace folks in that too. <laughs> but not something we can ever imagine happening on our earth in our time. Our corporate visions of a peaceful age are based on greater prosperity, more services, more physical luxuries, more of the good life for me and mine, despite how that might affect someone or some place far away and unknown to me. But Isaiah's vision of peace and justice is much more than some human effort to reorder the society. It is based not only on changing the structures of the society, but on changing human hearts. So they will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. God's Christmas message has always been about peace on earth, goodwill among all people. 
But it finds its genesis in Jesus' demand that we seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added. In other words, seek first that elusive inner peace of confidence in the promises of God so that you too may be a maker of peace in this needy world, desperate for shalom. Our difficulty in catching hold of Isaiah's vision of peace may rest in our misunderstanding of what peace, well, what the peace of God really is. Reverend Bob Berenger tells this story. Some years ago, an art contest was held on a main seacoast town. Local artists were invited to submit a painting that portrayed the idea of peace. Many entries depicted beautiful, idyllic scenes of peaceful landscapes and gentle waters lapping against the shore. But the picture, which took first prize, showed a rocky sea coast in the midst of a violent storm. Waves were crashing against the rocks, sending sprays of water high in the air. On the surface of it, the scene was anything but peaceful. However, on closer examination of the painting, there was a seagull, just a tiny bird, huddled in the cleft of a rock. All around the bird, the angry sea pounded the sea coast, but the little gull, shielded by the rock, was safe and secure in the midst of the storm. That is, a much, that is much closer to the Bible's understanding of personal speech, peace offered to us, that personal peace offered to us. Not an absence of conflict, but a sustaining presence within our troubled lives, that comforts us and keeps us centered in the midst of turbulence. We heard that belief in a sustaining presence in both It Came Upon a Midnight Clear and I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Both poems or carols, as well as the scripture reading, arose out of a time of conflict and turmoil. Just as we live in our own time of conflict, struggle, and turmoil. God's Christmas message to you and to me is that we can know that peace through the presence of the holy in our daily lives. Isaiah's vision of a world where peace and justice are possible is based on that same conviction that it is God who brings us peace. Isaiah never forgot that it is still God's world. And that one day God will be triumphant over everything that is evil and oppressive in our world. Isaiah could envision a reconciliation that would include not only human beings and the living God, but all of creation. In Jesus Christ, our broken, troubled world catches a glimpse of a time to come when the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. And we must hold on to the hope and be witnesses to the peace that God is already at work through the power of servant love that God is already at work to bring about that new age. And every now and then, you and I are privileged to see God at work. Seek first that elusive inner peace of confidence in the promises of God even when or perhaps especially when you feel like that little bird clinging to the cleft in the rock in the midst of a raging storm. So then you too, safe and secure, in the sustaining presence of God, may be a maker of peace in this needy world, desperate for shalom. Are you ready? Are you ready to be witnesses to peace, to the Prince of Peace? Are you courageous enough to hope for and work toward peace? A peace-filled world of justice, of shalom? When we are able to embrace the promises of God in the birth of Jesus, we are filled with an abiding peace and are empowered to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. And then, may God guide our feet in the way of peace. 
May it be so. In the greatest of hope, thanks be to God. Amen. Tate, 
Madison, and Justice, Justin. And we pray for those who are wounded in body, mind, and spirit. For children and parents in schools and communities that are struggling to heal. So too, O oh God, and this is, this is often hard for us who feel safer judging the good and the bad, the right and the wrong, the sinner, the saint, for providing explanations. You have taught us to pray for our enemy, so we must lift up those who have committed violence and their families, those lives that are devastated. Let us remember that pain goes in many directions from each and every act of violence. We pray for peace every year in Advent, God, and it does feel elusive. Open us this year. Open us in this time, this new time, this new day, to the promises of the season. Sustaining God, we lift to you this day. Those who are lonely or grieving, caretakers and caregivers, those who struggle with addiction and those in recovery. We lift you, Julie, recovering from a heart attack. We lift you, all those who are struggling with COVID, those with active cases, especially Paul, those who are struggling with long COVID, and all the fears that surround this highly contagious disease. So to God, we lift our prayers of joy and gratitude. Bless us with a welcoming spirit in this community for all those new immigrants who have arrived on our shores. Bless us with a generous spirit. And for those prayers not spoken aloud, those names on our hearts, those fears, doubts, concerns, Ways we need your guidance and for those joys and gratitudes held on our hearts but known to you. All that is lifted in this time of prayer. Oh God, in this season of peace, of promised peace, of long for peace, we pray for renewed hope and energy and for transformation that our lives, our families, our churches, our communities, our nation, our world will be healed and filled with peace and justice. Grant us the courage and the wisdom to look beyond the realities of this world, to see your dream of a new world, a different world, where the wolf lives with the lamb in peace. And more importantly, we live with our neighbors in peace. God of peace, grant us the compassion to reach out to our needy neighbor and may we learn to live more simply that others may simply live. And may we receive the way of your realm and with your hope and your peace in us pursue a more loving world where a little child will lead us into the future. Amen. Amen. And let us pray together as our Lord taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as we come before God with our offerings, let us do so with generous hearts, for indeed it is more blessed to give than to receive.
tithes and offerings, O God, return to you. Multiply and use them to bring the word and the touch of Jesus to this place and throughout the world. And with these gifts, we dedicate ourselves to your peaceable realm, daring to hope in your presence among us this day and every day. Amen. You may be seated. Come, come, follow the light that shines for you and leads you to a stable with a manger and a child. Lord, do you join me in the invitation. I should have started with writing to join me in the invitation. You'll find it, should find it printed in your bulletin. Is it there? Yes. Okay. Let's try it again. Come. Follow the light that shines for you and lead you to a stable with a manger and a child. Lord, Lord we have followed the light. Come, listen for the voice that calls you to find new life in the broken corners of the world. Lord, we have heard the voice. Come, rich and poor, neighbor or stranger, gather around and share a celebration with the Prince of Peace. Lord, we have gathered to meet with you. Come like wealthy kings with priceless gifts or poor shepherds with only themselves to bring. For the Spirit has led you to this place where you are offered the promise of new life. Lord, fill us with new life. And let us join together in singing our communion hymn and our black hymnal be known to us in the breaking of the bread. a mystery, but is the root of our faith. Open our eyes so we can see the Spirit guiding us, and open our hearts to share the Christ within us as we continue the journey of faith, thanking you for all that has gone and the future to come. For the faith of parents through history and of children who followed them. For the visions of prophets and disciples who shared your word and all who believe them. For the obedience of Mary and Joseph called to serve you as parents of Jesus. And for the wise people and shepherds who saw a guiding light and heard angels sing. So followed to a stable where they found new life in a manger. It was the life of a child born to be king of a kingdom to come, who grew to be a man of the cross, and who died for living your word, but walked from the tomb to give us the hope and mystery of our faith. So thank you, Lord, for the manger and the cross and the journey between that gives new hope when we walk with your Son. Amen. Holy Spirit of Christ, come among us. Bless this bread which we take and break, remembering how Jesus gave his new life, gave his life for us. 
and Holy Spirit, gift of Christ, remain among us and bless this cup as we remember how your love was poured out for us. Amen. Jesus took bread, broke it, and blessed it, and asked his disciples to remember how life was given for them and the generations to come. In the same manner, after eating, he took the cup, and he asked them to remember how his love was poured out as a sign of a new relationship with God and for the forgiveness of sins. So draw near with faith. Be strengthened by the life of our Lord Jesus Christ who was born in a stable to be the living bread and died on a cross having poured out his life so we may drink from God's cup of forgiveness. Eat and drink. Take him into your hearts this Advent with thanksgiving. And as you take your bread, hold it in prayer and remember how the body of Jesus was born lived and was broken for you, and then we'll eat together, united in one body. In the same manner also, we offer you the cup to hold in prayer and remember how Jesus poured out his love for you and meets your needs when, you're open, when you open yourself to the Holy Presence. Indeed, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. I invite you to join in the prayer of Thanksgiving, printed in the bulletin. We give you thanks, O God, because in your free gift of love, you have reached out to us. You have refreshed us at your table and touched our deepest needs and called us to life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth in the name of Jesus Christ, that we too may become bread and peace for one another and the world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn is Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates, written based on Psalm 24, when King David was calling the people to Jerusalem to prepare for the coming of the ark. In his like manner, this hymn calls us to open our hearts this season for the coming of Christ. Let us join together in singing hymn number 114. Go in peace. Let us go forth and joy to serve the living Lord. Amen. Amen.